beginning depreciation column on the 104 should be compared to the life-to-date depreciation column on the EIS 305 book value report. So currently, here is our beginning depreciation amount on the 104. So we're going to go ahead and run the 305 report. And if we excluded entity IDs from the 104, we want to do the same thing for the 305 in order for this to balance correctly. Also, we want to put in the reporting date, and it's a good idea to put in from till the end of the year. So for example, it'd be June 2010. Do you want to select all our individual tags, all of them, and your status code? When running the 305, be sure to select active and disposed of items because the 104 beginning depreciation column includes depreciation amounts for all items that were active at the be beginning of the year. So this is going to include items that were disposed of during the year because at the beginning of the year they were still active. So we want to put in all active, which includes A, N, E, H, E, N, and then D for disposed of. And then it will automatically prompt for those dis disposition dates, and it usually prompts for the entire year. And you want to make sure you have capitalized, because the 104 only includes capitalized items. And then you want to sort the same way that you sorted the 104, which was by function. Just in case you have discrepancies in amounts, it will be easier to compare the two reports. Let's view the 305. And what we're looking at is the life-to-date depreciation column. It's the middle column here. We're going to go down to the bottom. Here is the grand total amount. This should equal the amount on the 104, which it does. So we know that those two amounts are in balance. Now what we're going to do is we're also going to compare the ending depreciation column on the 104 to the total depreciation column on the 305. We're going to have to run the 305 a bit differently for this. So first off, here's my ending depreciation amount on the 104. Again, if I need to exclude specific entities. And for this one, we want to make sure that we're selecting just the active items this time. The reason being is the 104 ending depreciation column amount has subtracted off any disposed of items during the current year. So A, N, E, H, and E, N are considered my active items. So I'm just going to hit the Enter key. Make sure again that it's just capitalized assets only. And again, I'm going to sort by function because that's how my 104 is sorted. And this time I'm looking at the total depreciation column. So I go down to the bottom and find my total depreciation amount, and this should balance with my ending depreciation on the 104. And it does. Please refer back to the video selection for more information on the EIS GAP reports.